records. All right. Guys, today is 26. All right, 26. May 26. Yesterday, we started this new chapter. We talk about um, selling price, cost price, and the problems related to percentage, right? And also, we did a few examples about simple interests. Now, we will continue from where we stopped. We were solving problems about simple interest. We did this and three examples. Okay, my calculator is here. Guys, we'll continue solving more problems. Uh, example seven, Simon or Simon wanted to borrow some money to expand his fruit shop. Okay, he was told he could borrow a sum of money for 30 months at 12% simple interest per year and pay $1,440 in interest charge. How much money could he borrow? Okay, that's a question. When we are solving this kind of questions, I mean, any question related to interest, first, we have to write what is given, right? Here it says that Simon wanted to borrow some money. How much money, we don't know, right? And let's say that is actually P, that's our principle. We don't know this. And he was told he could borrow a sum of money for 30 months. So time is 30 months. And immediately we have to change this into years because this one is 12% means it is per year, right? So 30 months is 30 over 12 years because in one year we have 12 months, right? To convert month into years, we have to divide by 12. Or convert years into month, we have to multiply by 12. Okay, and also rate is given 12% per year. So here we have the rate is 12%, which is 0 0.12, right? and pay 1,440 in interest charge. This one is interest because you're borrowing some amount of money and using this for, in your, for your business. After a certain period of time, you have to return it to the owner. Here, the owner is the bank. And also we need to pay some additional amount. That is interest, right? So here interest is also given. That is $1,440. The question is, how much could he borrow? How much money could he borrow? The question is, what was the principle, right? You need to find this principle. T is given, R is given, I is given, P is given. We are just going to use our simple interest formula is, we have only one, that is P, R, T, right? And we are going to find P. From here, P is equal to I over R, T and I is equal to 1440 over rate, it is 0 0.12, and time, it is 30 over 12. If you simplify this by six, uh, it is five over two, that's 2.5. So that is 2.5, two and a half years. So from here, P is equal to 1440 is divided by 0 0.12 times, 2.5, which is equal to $4,800. Okay, that means that actually this Simon borrowed $4,800 from a bank or any, uh, what is it, microfinance company to expand his business. Not as simple. Next question. To buy a car, Raymond borrowed $20,000 for three and a half years and paid $5,880 simple interest on the loan. What rate of interest did he pay? Okay, here the amount that he borrowed is given, the P, and the time is given, and also interest is given. Here the question is R. Right? Again, we know that our formula is P is equal to, sorry, not P. I is equal to PRT. We are looking for R from here. So R is equal to I over 
P times T, right? So what is I? This one is I, right? Because he paid 5,880 as simple interest on the loan. So that is $5,880 over principal, that is 20,000 times, and T, 3.5 years, that is 3.5 years, right? So that's equal to 5880 over 3.5 times 20,000, which is equal to 0 0.0084. But usually we have to convert this into percentage, right? So the rate is, the rate was, if you multiply it by 100, that is 8.4%. So the rate of this simple interest per year was 8.4%. Okay, Ropi, is it clear? Yes, sir, I got it. Very good, good boy. Guys, now let's talk about compound interest. All right, the first one was simple interest and every time we were calculating everything based on the principle. But here there's another case, okay. So simple compound interest formula is this, A capital A equals principal times one plus rate over 100 to the power T. Or simply, I can just write this denote this capital R over 100 by lowercase r. That is in decimal form. This one is an integer form, or just um, I would say that is without percentage, right? Without percentage. And if I just divide it by 100, 100, and we will get decimal number. Okay. So in the first case. At the end of each period, period, the bank was calculated, calculating your interest based on your original principal, right? Original capital, because you invested how much? $100. If the rate is 3%, let's say you are investing this money for three years. At the end of each year, actually, they are taking or using that $100 as a capital. But here is another case. Okay. Let's say, you are investing $100, just example. All right, this here. Okay, rate is, let's say it is 4%, or I think I can just write 5%, it doesn't matter, which is 0 0.05. And time is, let's say, three years. Okay. This is another way of calculating interest, and that is more, uh, how to say, it's used in many different brands of finance. Okay. And we will see them a bit later. All right. The first one at the end of the first year. Okay. This is the first year period. Okay. Starting, let's say, from the 1st of January till the last day of December. So now today is December 31. So the bank should calculate your interest and put it into your account, right? So how do they calculate? So at the end of this year, we know that interest is equal to principal, it is $100 times rate, it is 0 0.05. Let me just write here a different notation times. And how many years pass? Only one, right? So that is equal to how much? It is $5. And now the bank says that, okay, at the end of the first year, your money earns $5. So now this is your money, okay? So immediately they just add it to your account. So now at the end of the first year, how much money you have in your account? The original principal, right? It is P, let's say it's a P sub zero. Okay, maybe there's a P sub one. It's your first principal plus the first interest. 
Your first principal, how much is it? $100. And first interest earned by this money is $5. So it is $105. But now you have in your accounts, you have $105. So the, for the next year, now you allow the bank to use this amount of money. Okay, it is not this. Now bank is using because you are not drawing or withdrawing any amount of money from the bank. So now the second year starts, the 1st of January, and that is the last day of December, the second year. The bank again calculates what is the interest. This one is, let's say, I sub 1. So this one is I sub 2. What is this? But now, they use this amount of money because this is yours, right? This is your money. So that is, the principal is $105 and the rate is still 0 0.05. So the year is just one year. That's equal to uh, 105 times 0 0.05. That's equal to how much? 5.25. 5.25. Right. Okay, so now let's say also this one is a sub one. And this one is a sub two. At the end of the second year, after the bank calculates your interest and adds to your balance, how much do you have now in your account? So that is at the beginning of the first year, you had this amount, right? So that is P sub two plus A sub two. Okay, and what is P sub two? That is principal, the second year's principal, that is $105, $105. And this money earns this much interest oh, right, during this year. So that is 5.25, which is equal to, what is it? 110, $110.25. So now at the end of the second year, you have this much account, I mean, amount in your balance, in your accounts. All right. Now the third year starts. It's the first January, the third year. Okay. So time is passing. Now we have reached the end of this year. The bank opens your account, again, calculates your interest and adds your uh, account, right? So here we have A sub 3 is equal to, what is it? Here we have P sub three plus I sub three. P sub three, it is this, right? That is 110.25 plus, now I sub three, again, we use this one, principle is this, it is 110.25, rate is 0 0.025, and how many periods we have? Only one minus one and which is equal to let me just write it here first 110.25 plus this thing is equal to why this zero point zero five times one Okay, so it is 110.25 times 0 0.05. That's equal to 5.5125. Okay, now this money earns this much money as an interest during this period of time. Okay, so now if you just evaluate this, that is equal to plus. 110.25, which is equal to 115, 115, 5.7625. Let's just write this correct for this matrix. Okay. Now, if you just calculate this with simple interest, if it was simple interest, we would get here. $115, right, if you remember, because every year it earns $5, $5, $5, and it's $15. So when it's compound interest, now it earns a bit more. How much? This is the difference. Okay, now we will continue. 
calculating interest in this way, actually, we call this compound interest. Why compound interest? Because at the end of each period, your interest is compounded, right? Compounded. That's why we call this compound interest. Now, if I just generalize this, you will see that every time this part is the previous one, the previous one, that one is this thing, right? Uh, where is it? This thing. And also this one is this thing. Okay. So when we just continue this, instead of this 100, if I use P, instead of 0 0.05, if I use R, and this one is just one, right? And simplify this, add them up, we will get this formula. Okay. Now proof, uh, if you're interested, I can show you a bit later, but this is how we should, we should understand this formula. So this amount is equal to this, principal and rate and time. Okay, let me uh, just generalize this and the folks on the questions. I need just one slide here. Okay. So the general case, okay, somebody invests P dollars at compound interest rates, it is R in decimal and for T years, okay? So now the first year, what happens? We have already did this, right? So at the end of the first year, the interest will be, that is, what is it? Um, P R T, right? And now, how many years passed? Our time is only one, so it is just P R. Okay. So now, at the end of the first year, our principal is this, right? That is our principal. Okay. So now, if I evaluate our amounts at the end of the first year, what is it? That is principal plus interest, right? Let me just write P1. That is, what is our P1? That is P, original one. And what is I1? I1 is PR. We have already calculated here, PR. So what is the common factor here? P is common factor. Take this out. So here we have one plus R, okay? So at the end of the first year, the bank owes you this amount. That's much money you have in your account. Now it continues. Let's say, how about during this uh, second year, what happens? At the end of the second year, again, they start calculating here. At the end of the second year, again, they just open your account, calculate your interest, and edit your amount. So first, let's calculate this interest. Interest is equal to P sub two times R times T. Actually, T is only all one, right? Because only one year here. What is P sub two? P sub two is how much you had in your account the last time, right? This much. So that is P one plus R times, and here we have, what is it? R, right? So now we need to calculate this amount. At the end of the second year, how much money we have? This much. That is the previous principal, previously we have this much, right? So that is P, one plus R, and this money earned, let me before this, just write like this, that is P sub two plus A sub two, right? What is P sub two? P sub two is this, this one is P sub two. That is a principle for the next year, right? So P sub two is P one plus R, plus how about I sub two? I sub two is this, right? It is P one plus R times R. Now, if you simplify this, what is the common factor? P times one plus R, P times one plus R. That is P one plus R, take this out. What is that here? One. And what is that here? Only R, right? And one plus R, one plus R. So here we have P times one plus R squared. All right, now one more observation. How about at the end of the third year? 
So that is I sub three, that's equal to P sub three. This is our P sub three, right? Principle for the next year. Times rate times one. P sub three is this, it is P one plus R squared times R. So at the end of the third year, how much money we have in our account? That is A, that is P sub three plus I sub three. P sub three equals this, P one plus R squared plus, how about I sub three is equal to this, P one plus R squared times R equals, what is the common factor? If you notice, these things are common factors, right? Take this out, one, I mean P, one plus R squared. And what is left here? If it's already out, one left here. How about here we took this out, R left here, right? And one plus R squared, one plus R. So that is one P, one plus R cubed. Okay. So now, if you just notice, there's a pattern. It follows some kind of pattern here. At the end of the first year, here we have P times one plus R to the power one. At the end of the second year, we have P times one plus R squared. At the end of the third year, one plus R cubed, right? So what happens after N years? At the end of N years, then we can conclude this, uh, we can draw this conclusion. That is P times one plus R to the power N. Okay, that is our compound interest form. Okay, and from here, if you want to find compound interest, because this is the amount, right, not interest, then compound interest is equal to, what is it? The amount, right, minus principal. So the difference gives us compound interest. This is the amount of money that we invested. And this is the amount of money we have at the end of our business or our investments, right? So the difference is your earning that is compound interest. Why we are calling compound interest? Why one more time? Because at the end of each period of this uh, time, your interest is compounded. Okay, it's just combined with your principle. That's why it is called compound interest. Okay, guys, any question? All right, then everything is clear. If you have question anytime you can ask, just raise your hand and ask, okay? Let's see a few examples related to compound interest. Example nine. Example nine. Find the compound interest on $600 for three years as 3.5% per annum, compounded annually. And this is really important. Compounded annually means at the end of each year, your interest is compounded with the principal, okay? So find the compound interest, we need to find I, on $600. So what is given here? It is principal, that is $600, right? And time, that is three years, and rate, that is 3.5% and immediately changes to decimal, that is 0 0.035, right? And compounded annually, all right. And here we have I, we need to find the compound interest. So our A is equal to using that formula, P times one plus R to the power T equals, what is the principal? 600, let me just write it with a dollar sign. And one plus, how about rate? 0 0.035. And time, it is three, so here we have three. And which is equal to, it is 600 times 1.035 to the power three. And which is equal to, 
let me just find our answer correct there's three decimal places um that is six six five point two three actually here zero seven two five what i see but if you want to write this correct as three decimal places right so this should it is seven that's why i need to add one to the previous digit and just drop off the rest so because of the seven here we will have one all right correct the three decimal places exactly is equal to this correct the three decimal places in the quiz all right if i ask you to uh, to leave your answer correct the three decimal places it is something like two three one or zero seven if you just write here zero it is wrong all right because your answer is wrong it should be two three one and some people say that oh there's only small mistake yeah it's a small mistake but that means that you don't understand how to write uh, your answer correct a given number of decimal places okay you should know this because university student and the writing a number correct a certain number of decimal places you should know this because when you just do this kind of mistake i assume that you don't know you don't have this knowledge of writing a given number correct a certain number of decimal places okay because you made a lot of mistakes like this that's why one more time i'm i'm reminding you yeah, let's do one more question. No, we didn't finish it yet. That is our first step, right? The question is we need to find I. So what is I? I is that amount minus principal. So amount is it is 665.231 minus principal, it is six hundred dollars. So which is equal to we just write here uh sixty five point two three one dollars okay so either if you are getting a loan from a bank the six hundred dollars and the, on the compound interest that is compounded annually and the rate is three point five percent so the interest will be sixty five dollars and twenty three cents okay and usually in, in small amounts we can even ignore this we can write correct to the small places okay one more example then you'll have break find the compound interest okay again we need to find i on $1,500 for five years at three percent per annum compounded annually so here given information what is given here principal is given principal is $1,500 and the time it is five years right at rate three percent which is 0.03 and the question is, we need to find the compound interest. And we know the compound interest is amount minus principal. First, we know P, we need to find A first to answer this question. So the amount is principal times one plus R to the power T in general. But in our example, P is 1,500. Let me just write all the sign here one plus rate is 0 0.03 and to the power five which is equal to how much 1500 times 1 1.03 to the power five which is equal to let me just write correct two decimal places it is 1739.91 two decimal places okay that is our first step and second step the compound interest is amount minus principal which is equal to 1739.91 minus 1500 which is equal to how much it is 239.91 right so that is a compound interest that money earns okay this money when you just invest this into the bank or when you put this into the bank for five years at the rate of three percent okay compounded annually guys do you have any question
Bong Kong. Yes, sir. So who is this 2020? I don't know, sir. You don't know? 2020, who are you? All right, secret agents. It's me, 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 me. You, you, who are you? What's your name? Um, famous girl in the university. What? Say again. Run Moison. Moison. My name is Moison. Yes. Um, Moison, you change your name. Yeah, I changed to Virus Corona 2020, 2020. It's better. <laughs> Muson, why did you take your midterm exam? Um, it's a disaster because I cannot, um, it's not because of the teacher, because of myself. Yeah, I know that. That's why I'm asking you why you didn't take it. Um, because I was not able to, to join it because, um, I was having a call and I have a meeting with Dr. Kairat too, but I didn't able to go. I just come back from the hospital. And then um, I don't, like I want to ask for the quiz again, but then I just say, nah, anyway, I won't pass it. <laughs> all right, most fun. When you have a time, come and visit me if possible, all right? Every I'll be there on Thursday. Huh? I'll be there on Thursday. Okay, come and visit me. I'll be in 514, fifth floor. Yes, yes, yes. Even though I visit you, so my point will be the same. <laughs> no, 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 let me just talk to you. Actually, you are the only one who is behaving like this, and this course is the easiest mm -hmm. one among the other courses. And uh, mm -hmm. you have everything to do. You know what to do. All right. Um, actually, so sir, you, I, you know, I, I know that I can cope up with this, but then when I have like too much, too much things to do, like I have to let it go. One thing I tell Mr. Kara too, that, um, I apologize, um, Matt's teacher that it's not that he's not teaching good or anything because I, I, I really cannot handle it because I have two, two, two school and I have my own business too. And, um so all yeah, right that's so, why I so, have so when you come and visit me we'll talk about this okay i will wait for you on thursday okay yeah. guys okay thank now, you all right uh guys have a break okay after like 10 minutes we will continue it's already time only two minutes left okay see you after 10 minutes